Hey everybody. Good evening, beautiful souls. I um, I guess I just felt like touching base. It's been quite a while since I've made any videos and I just wanted to say I'm right here with you still. Um, life has continued to unfold. Ella is 13 months already. Can you believe it? Her first word is hi, hi, hi. And she's walking around like crazy, running, in fact, and is just a happy, beautiful, loving baby. And Tom and I say every day that we've been truly, truly blessed with this one. Um, she doesn't give us any trouble at all, sleeps amazing, eats amazing, um, is amazing, um, and just brings so much light to all of us. And it's, it's so beautiful. Um, so I guess, you know, just over a year in being a mom now, um, I think that I just wanted to um, bring to the foreground uh, some of the reasons why I think it's going so well. And um, a big part of that is that prior to her presence in our life, thankfully, um, I was really able to contemplate what um, the meaning of life is for me. And the meaning of life ultimately came down to the recognition that my life is just as valuable as the lives of my brothers and sisters around the planet. And that if I want to be happy, that I must give that happiness to my brothers and sisters. And that if I want to feel loved and, um, and whole, that I must love my brothers and see my brothers and sisters as whole. And so because of this law that I like to call it, um, giving as you would receive, which is the law of God, the golden rule, it has literally taken precedence in my mind and in our life. And so this law to me um, is the law that governs all of behavior and Jesus actually says a sentence in um, the A Course in Miracles, and actually I think it's a sentence out of the authentic original manuscripts that I have been blessed to get my hands on. Um, but what does he say? He says, all behavior is motivated by needs. All behavior is motivated by needs. And so I just finished saying that the golden rule is the law of behavior according to God. Well, according to this world, the law of behavior um, is money <laughs> because we need money to get all of the things that we think that we need. Whereas God says that you need to give in order to have, that giving and having is synonymous, that in order to have things, it's not getting. You, you don't get things in order to have. Um, you give things in order to have. And why is that so? Because having and being are one. So I have learned through this contemplation of the meaning of life that life with a capital L means eternal life. And I am part of eternal life because I am a soul. I am a soul that never dies. And this soul is governed by the laws of the universe, the golden rule um, and uh, the, is the main one. I'm just going to stay there right now because we can get off track. But it is governed by the laws of the universe. And if I'm going to live and act and breathe and teach as a soul, then I must follow those laws and only those laws. And so Jesus speaks very specifically of three laws in the A Course in Miracles that are all around this idea of the golden rule. So the first one that we are to learn is that to have, give all to all. In order to have anything, you must give all to all. And so I have really, 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 really learned to apply this lesson because, um, again, back to the idea that to have um, is synonymous with being. And this being is literally an identity. It is the soul. It is the child of God. It is the Christ. It is the light. It is the... Um, eternal one, whatever word we want to give it, um, that is the truth of our being. And since this being is limitless and eternal and whole and complete and perfect as God created it to be, there is nothing that can affect this being state. There, This being has been given everything. This being has been given 
everything. And since this being has been given everything, it has so much to give. It has so much to give. And if we take the blinders off and look at the world right now, the world needs everything that we can give to it. And first and foremost, it needs it needs love. It, it needs a new way, you know. Um, I, I don't think any of us want to continue to see these terrorist attacks that are happening and, and all the fights and killings between all different types of people and races and nationalities and cultures in all different cities and countries around the world. Like, no more, thank you. And um, back to this idea of to have give all to all every single person doesn't matter if they're black doesn't matter if they're white doesn't matter if they're cops doesn't matter if they're muslim doesn't matter if they're they're terrorists doesn't matter if the rapists doesn't matter it doesn't matter what they've done okay everyone deserves your love everyone deserves forgiveness the reason that this is so is because the only reason that these people are acting out in the ways that they're acting out is because of their conditioning, of because of where they grew up, because of what they were taught that they were. And a lot of the times we are taught that we are these bodies that we need to make ourselves into something. And these bodies need all of these things, not only money and food and clothing and shelter, but these bodies think that they need attention and love and support and, and um, all of these different things that it thinks it needs and thus these needs are coming outside the self and are getting you got to get all of these things in order to to feel right and a lot of these people who are doing all these crazy 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 things in the world right now um are doing so because they get a high off of it you know they get something out of it you know they they feel like um you know whether they use the ideas of they're pleasing god or whether they think that they're fulfilling a mission or whatever it is it's backwards and upside down because their identity is backwards and upside down they don't need further condemnation and hate and guns shooting right back at them they need they need help okay they need help and the only way that we can help these people is by helping ourselves and we can help ourselves by changing the idea of who we think we are to realize that we don't have to think that we are these bodies any longer that that um and these bodies oftentimes like who feels not good enough you know, who feels doubt on a daily basis? Who feels confusion and conflict in themselves and in their relationships? You know, who hates on themselves? Who sabotages themselves? You know, let's get real here. Like, let's be honest here. This identity of the self that we have accepted as true is not who we are. It is not the reality of us. So in order for us to bring a different type of reality to this world that is not founded in hell and chaos is to change that identity of who we think we are. And that just doesn't happen by us having these wishy-washy feelings and ideas of what we think that we want. It literally comes from higher willing. It literally comes from this higher willing of knowing that you have come from somewhere that is beyond this time-space continuum. And this place that you come from is a memory that is inside your mind that you can unlock the instant that you choose for that experience beyond anything else. And this is why all behavior is motivated by needs. Because either we have the need to have more money and to have all of these things of the world and to have people like us, or we have the need for God's will. We have the need for peace inside of our minds, in our relationships, and in our world. What's our need here? It needs to come back to this recognition. And a lot of the time we will state what our choice is and what our main need structure is um, through our teaching. And it's not just teaching on video. Like you don't have to pick up the camera and do what I do, although you can. Um, but it is what we are teaching to our children. It's what we're teaching to our partners. It's what we're teaching to our parents. It's what we're teaching to our friends. It's what we're teaching to um, just the people in our lives because what we teach, we learn. And so that's the second um, law that Jesus speaks of. The first being to have, give all to all, because we are all worthy of, of healing and of love. And then the second one is to have peace, teach peace, to learn it. And so we have to teach peace in order to learn it. And the only way that we will accept peace wholly and completely is by thinking only God's thoughts, is by, by sharing 
his mind and his view of the world. Because God looks upon the world and sees his souls. He sees his unharmable, lovable, perfect souls. And so he has given us the answer through the Holy Spirit to all of our problems here in this world because he doesn't see problems. So he's given us the answer. He has given us everything we need to fulfill that answer here. But for as long as we think that we are these separate bodies needing to act according to the laws of the world and do these things for ourselves alone or for our small little unit, excluding everybody, meaning the whole entire world and universe, then we will not recognize that God has given us everything. We will not recognize that God has given us the answer to all of our problems and all our seeming stresses. But this is back to the idea of higher willing. What do I really want? If what I really, 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 really want is peace, guess what? You will do everything in your power to eradicate every single thought and uproot, uproot and undo every single egoic thought and belief and idea that you have accepted to be true for yourself and for others and get rid of it. Get rid of all of it. You know, like the ego is what stands in our way of realizing the perfection of that which you are. The ego is the dark spot that blinds you to see the innocence of your soul and the innocence of the souls of our brothers and sisters around the planet. The ego is the selfish little motherfucker, pardon my French, that wants us to focus only on keeping this body intact. But you know what? I can promise you that the law of God, give as you would receive, works. This is the only law that I have applied in my life for the last six years, including the time with having our baby Ella. And it has proven to me time and time and time and time and time again that this is God's plan, that this is God's universe, and that we are God's children and we can trust him. But we have to trust him with all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our being and be willing to undo and let go of everything that is not him. Because in doing that, we find the peace and the peace is what this world needs. And the only way that we can give peace to the world is by finding peace in our hearts and minds. Since I said yes to this law and I've been applying it into my life, do you think we have bucket loads of money in our, um, wallets or in our you know bank accounts nope do we have exactly what we need absolutely we've never missed a meal and it's not even just little meals like we have whole and healthy and natural ingredients that i get to be creative with every single day and enjoy cooking the way that i do every single body product that we buy is organic and natural all of it is clean all of our cleaning products are natural and organic and whole. All of our clothes are perfect. Ella has everything she wants and more. She's being totally fulfilled. We're being totally fulfilled. You know, we have been in this little home unit that we are in, and you can see the story of how we got to this house on my blog on miraclesofmind.org if you're interested. But we are in this home and we did not choose this home this home chose us and we are in the center of so many parks so many trails we have a beach that is 15 minute walk from here we have a huge play park with a zoo and like all these different things for the kids not even 15 minutes from here we've got all these different parks and trails and lakes and everything that we could ever want or need like we are in the perfect place for us but we would have never, ever, 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 ever chosen this if we didn't leave it to God. But the biggest key thing here is to have patience enough to trust his plan. We have to have patience enough to trust his plan because we end up saying, okay, I give it to God, I give it to God, I trust him. And then guess what? We take those reins back. We take it back into our hands. We're like, okay, now I can do this, I can do this. No, don't let that fear trample on your trust and faith in the power of the loving universe. Like we have a direct guide inside us to guide us every single step of the way. If you're not told what to do, don't do anything. But the instant that you're told or feel guided to move or do something, then do it with all your heart. And know that your well-being is not different than anybody else's. That we have shared interests and needs. Shared interests and needs. You don't need more money than somebody else needs money. Okay? 
You don't need shelter more than anybody else needs shelter. You don't need food more than anybody else needs food. You don't need love more than anybody else needs love. And for as long as we are putting our own self separate interests ahead of everybody else's, that's where it goes downhill and that's where we have roller coaster days and that's where we have confusions and doubts and freakouts because we're putting ourselves ahead of everybody else instead of realizing that everybody else is myself. Everybody else is myself. So I can love everybody else. I can give to everybody else. I can serve to everybody else because guess what? The law is giving as you would receive. You receive that back upon you. But again, if you're one of those people who say, I give to everyone, I give to everyone, and I never get anything, well, what's your reason for giving to other people? Is it a selfless giving? Or is it because there's something in there that you still want to get? Are you doing it because you have to? Because selfless giving rewards selfless receiving, but you have to be open to receiving. If you're not open to receiving, you won't receive what's coming to you. It's back to realizing that our highest good, our highest good is in the hands of our creator. Our highest, 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 highest good. So if we don't feel like we're experiencing our highest good, it's because we're still blocking it from ourselves in some way. But we have an inner direct teacher to help us to uncover and to see what that is. And so I think what I'm gonna leave here with all of us is that there is a law that we can follow that will lead us to the results of peace, of happiness, of fulfillment of purpose, of fulfillment of function, of peace on earth, peace in mind. And we literally can experience this new reality by changing our minds about what we think we need. And everything that we think we need extends from the perception of who we think that we are. So it's one and the same. It's both. You know, open to changing your mind about who you think you are, open to changing your mind about what you think you need, open to changing your mind about what you think your brothers and sisters are and what God is. And if you're truly open to contemplating all through the perspective, perspective of love and of eternal life, it will be shown to you in a way that is perfectly clear, perfectly understood, and your heart will just radiate in this beam of light and it will keep you alive and thriving. That's the thing, we're thriving over here in our little homestead. It's amazing. And how do we make the ends meet every single month? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but it happens every single time. And God will send us the most perfect people to bless us. He will put us in the perfect situations to, to help us. And um, all is already taken care of by Him. And we can trust it. We really, really, really can trust it. There is no excuse that we can have for not trusting Him. And, and trusting His will and His voice and His laws and His way. And um, so I just really wanted to put that out there because more than ever before, um, this world really, really um, needs love and needs miracles. And um, we can be the miracle workers that this world is seeking. And when we ask for miracles in our own mind to change our minds about who we are, about what our needs are, and about who our brothers are, we will then be able to give to our brothers and receive our needs and continue to give more and more and more to our brothers and receive more and more and more and more and just activate this law of, of giving um, so that all of us know that we've been given everything and it's safe to be who we are. And so it's safe to be who we are, brother and sister souls. It's okay. Come out as the soul that you are and just let it shine and let it bless and let it heal because we all need it. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. God bless you. See you soon.